started. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the second of our iPad app reviews here. Last week we took a look at a couple of the uh, features uh, that are built into Apple or Apple's iOS. Today we'll look at a couple more of those. Uh, again, while I'm talking, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the um, chat box and Jenny's here and she'll either address the questions or, or feed them on to me and we'll try and get through this again in a, in a matter of 15 minutes and, and leave you with some good information for the day here. So this is the last week we're going to look at things that are built into the operating system of the iPad. Next week we'll, we'll move on and start looking at apps uh, and continue that from, uh, from there on. So the first, I want to I go in back into settings this week. So we'll, we'll, we'll tap settings and then I'm going to um, go and I'm going to scroll down to where we see accessibility. And I'm going to tap on accessibility here. And today, today we're going to look at the thing up on the very top. We're going to look at voiceover. VoiceOver is the, um, is the screen reading component to the iPad, which is going to give accessibility to the, to the iPad to um, anybody who has a visual impairment. You're going to be able to access the iPad any way that you can, uh, any way a normal person can through listening to what you see on the, um, uh, on the, on the screen. Uh, this is really a robust screen reading tool. It, it, it's a fantastic screen reading tool. It has a lot of different components to it that really allows you to uh, use, your, use your fingers, use gestures to manipulate how you're going to listen to the screen reading voice. So what you'd want to do here is you'd want to scroll to, to turn that on. You'd, you'd, over here where it says off, you'd, you'd grab the button here and slide it across to turn it on. I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to point out a couple of things. And it's these three things right here. When you start using VoiceOver, it changes how you interact with the iPad. Typically, when you interact with the iPad, you tap on something, it opens that or goes to that thing. When VoiceOver is on and you tap on something, it reads that out loud. To, you have to open it, you have to double tap, and to scroll, you have to swipe with three fingers. So if we turn this to on, it's hard to turn it back off this way. So I'm going to show you another way that we can turn that on. And what we're going to do is we're going to tap back on accessibility. And we will, go, we will go down to where it says triple click home and tap on triple click home. So now here you can choose what you want to attach to the triple click home button. And I'm going to choose voiceover. And then I will go back to uh, voiceover up here. And I'll show you how this works now. So the, triple, the home button is that round button on the bottom of your screen. If you have set the triple click home to voiceover and you hit that three times, Landscape. you'll hear it turns the voiceover on. And you heard there it tells us a little bit more. It tells, it tells us the home buttons to the left, so it gives us kind of the layout of what we're looking at. It will also tell us if we tap on things, it will tell us the time. If we tap on, uh, if, we if we tap on the, uh, where the Wi-Fi signal is, it will tell us the signal strength. If we, if we tap in the battery area, it will tell, tell us the battery, uh, uh, battery power left. So now if we get out of this and go back into the, uh, the, main, the main area of the iPad here, we'll show you how this works. So, so you can see it, it's, it's got a little box drawn around messages there and it said double tap to open. If I tap on anything, it, it moves to that section or moves to that, that app and it tells us what it is. If I want to open something, I would tap on it once. And once I hear that I've tapped Safari, I can double tap anywhere on this screen and it will open that up for me. One other thing that you need to know about controlling voiceover is that if you flick your fingers from side to side, it'll take you to, it'll take you, move you back and forth throughout these icons. So if I move to the left with my finger on the iPad, and you can't see me doing this, but I'm moving my finger to the left. Right now it's beeping. There it goes back to settings. There it goes to photo booth. There it goes to camera. If I go the other way, if I move toward the right, and this is just sliding my finger across the iPad screen, it moves across the iPad to, where, uh, uh, to the next thing. So I'm going to go back to Safari, and I will double tap on that now. 
And so you can see we opened up the website. And now wherever I touch, it's going to read that out loud. First year, link, let's start. Course schedules, link. Employee self service, link, let's start. Now what's really neat about this as well is there's another feature in it that allows us to control this without keyboard commands. Typically, if you're using a screen reader like JAWS or Window Eyes on the computer, you're going to need to know a lot of keyboard commands to use it successfully. With this, it does not use any keyboard commands. We can use it uh, basically just swiping our finger across the screen. And looks like we there. We'll see, we lost our air server. Let's try and get that back quick. Sorry about that. Turn that off. We'll get our air server back on here. And once we see our iPad again, there we go. I apologize. We will um, we'll get back into our uh, voiceover here. We'll turn that back on. So as I was saying then, typically when you use a, a screen reader, you have to use keyboard commands to navigate via headings or via, via links or whatnot. That's not the case here. You just have to do one gesture, and that's a gesture that looks like this. You rotate your fingers in a circle on the middle of the screen. It's called the rotor. So if we go ahead and we do that, I'll show you. It pops up an option there. So there, if I, if, right now it's set as links. So I set the rotor to link, and now if I swipe my fingers up and down, it jumps me through the links on the page, for example. I'm swiping my finger down right now. And it showed me the president's welcome. If I swipe it down again, it's going to scroll me through the links that way. Now, if I do the if I do the rotator motion again, I can get the form controls. There's tables. I'm not seeing that show on your screen, but you you can hear it go to list. See if we can go to headings. There we go. You're seeing now. You're seeing it on your screen. So we'll keep going until we can get to our headings. Hopefully we're almost there. There we go. So we get to headings. It tells us there's 14 headings, and then by going down with my finger, I'm going to different headings. If I go back up, I'm going through different headings as well. So that's how you would use, that's how you would kind of navigate through headings through, um, and to change your speed, to change your sound, all that stuff would be done through. Um, would be done through the rotator. And I apologize for that sound effects being up there. I just now realized that I had my um, my volume button resting on the edge of the desk, and that's why that was up the whole time. Sorry for that. So we'll just show you one more time. If I do the rotating, that's what it's going to look like on your screen. And you have several options there that we can, if we keep rotating through, it'll change what those options are. Now, if I want to go in and listen to something here, I'll choose this story. And double tap on it. It takes me into this. To scroll up, I use three fingers. Sometimes that's not even doesn't even like to work well with that. So I will just start reading. And to start reading, I can tap on text, and it'll read that. And then if I want to keep going, I'm going to swipe to the to the right with my finger, one finger on the screen. And you can see it starts moving down along with the text here. So we'll swipe again. And then we can keep We could keep reading that way by keep swiping our finger to the right when we uh, when we when we get to the end of what we've already read. So that's um, that that's the key components of of your voiceover. It's going to read back everything. It's going to give those visual impairments access to the uh, to the iPad. It's primarily it's primarily going to work with um, with anything that's 
Apple based. So you know your messages, your email, your Safari, that kind of thing. It doesn't guarantee to work within other apps. But anything that's Apple based, we can get full auditory access for somebody with a visual impairment. Um, I'm going to turn off my voiceover here for a second. If anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, type them into the into the chat box there, and I will I will address them. But I'm going to turn it off for a second by hitting my triple click home button again. You can hear now that the voiceover is off. And then I'm going to go back to my settings. Within settings, I'm going to show you a couple other things here. So with voiceover, we, you saw we did the rotor. If you look down here, there's, a, um, there's an option for rotor. If I tap rotor here, it's going to show me everything that I can put into that rotor. So if I want to be able to navigate by any of these things, I can put those in the rotor and get several different options. I'm just going to go back and show you a couple more things for people with visual impairments. Tap accessibility up there. I'm going to show you just zoom. If we, turn, if we hit zoom and we turn zoom on, you'll see there's a Sorry about that. I was kicked out of my own recording for a second. We'll uh, we'll bring back our our share. Can Jenny? Can we see the the uh, iPad on there? Not yet. Okay. Hopefully it's coming up. I apologize for this. Not sure why we got booted out of here. Let me see if there's anything I have to do with sharing. Let's try this one more time. Let's share the desktop and get the iPad back up here. All right, let's see if we can pull that back up. We were All right, I apologize for that. So I was talking about zoom. So again, to use the zoom, you would use three fingers. And if I take three fingers and double tap on the screen, it zooms in on the screen. And now I take three fingers and scroll, and you can see I can move around with that with on the, within the screen that way. If I do three fingers, a three finger double tap and then start scrolling before lifting my fingers off the screen. I can change the, the zoom rate here. That's a little bit harder to do. There we go. I can change how much I zoom in or out that way. And that's going to be hard to replicate on your screens there, but you'll see that's how that works. And if I, tri if I double tap with three fingers again, it zooms all the way out. So I'm going to shut that off. I'm going to go back to accessibility. And the last thing I want to show you here is if we look down at the bottom of your screen, is the assistive touch option. And the assistive touch option, let me try and maximize the, uh, the iPad on the screen again here. I've lost my cursor, so we might just deal with that as is. If you hit assistive touch, and we turn that on, what you're going to get, this is a way for some of the physical impairments, physical disabilities, to be able to access uh, touch controls on the iPad that they may not be able to access otherwise. And what I mean is if you can't touch the home button and push it, or you can't push the volume up, volume down buttons on the side, or you can't uh, shake it. We lost our air server again. Let's bring that back again. I apologize. Apologize for the technical difficulties today. Hopefully this doesn't last, this doesn't continue. There we go, bringing it back. So we're back in our settings. We're on the assistive touch stuff. And uh, let's see, let me just, we'll show you. So I turned it on. And so again, if people can't touch the controls of the iPad, what you're going to see at the very bottom here is this little white dot show up. And we can take that and move that to any part of the screen we want. But now when we touch that white dot, it's going to give us things to do. So the first thing it gives us is the home button. So if we can't touch the home button, we can tap here, and it'll take us home. If we go and we touch that white button again down the bottom corner, and then we hit device, 
it's going to show us several things that we can do with the device. We could hit, if we can't hit them, if we wanted to mute it, we could tap mute. If we wanted to turn the volume up and down, we could do that right here. Turn the volume down, turn it back up. We could lock the screen, rotate the screen. That can all be done within, the, um, within that assistive touch. You also see up here, if we look at the top, there's a gestures area. So if you're using uh, your fingers, uh, if you need multiple fingers to do a gesture and you can only use one finger, say we wanted to do a swipe within uh, voiceover and we needed three fingers, we could tap the three finger and it shows us three dots right in the middle of the screen. And we only have to be able to touch one of those to move the whole group. So that's how that's how your um, that's how your uh, your assistive touch would work there. If you look over here, there is something called favorites, and I want to show you how what, what we can do in favorites. I'm going to go into settings, and right under assistive touch, there's an option here that says create new gesture. We tap create a new gesture. What we can do is then we can mimic a gesture on this screen and we can make it work, uh, and we can create a gesture that can be a one-touch gesture. So if I wanted to do the rotator, but I can only move one finger within voiceover, I can take my two fingers, touch the screen, and rotate them like, we would, like it, that uh, action would entail, and hit stop and save, and I'll name this rotor, and hit save. And I'm going to leave my assistive touch on. You'll see in the bottom there's that still that white dot down there. So I will get out of this. Now if I turn my voice over back on, on. you hear it's on. If I want to use the rotor feature and I only have one finger I can, I can manage, I can hit my assistive touch button down in the bottom corner. And now I can double click it to open it. And then I can hit favorites. Favorite. And again, it, if I tap it once, it activates it. If I hit double tap anywhere on the screen now, it'll open it up. So I'm going to double tap off to the right. And we'll see there, we now have the rotor feature that I put in earlier. So if I tap rotor, rotor. and open it, you're going to see there's the two fingers that I would need to use. If I just tap one of them, Word. It starts spinning, and you can see it spins like the rotor and allows me to use the rotor. And I did that all with one finger. So that is what the assistive touch button allows you to do. So today, again, we looked at VoiceOver, a really robust uh, on, uh, screen reader component. We looked at assistive touch, a, a component for folks that have physical disabilities to be able to access the iPad. And last week, we looked at some other assistive things that are built in. Next week, we'll jump into looking directly at some apps. Does anybody have any questions on any of the stuff that we looked at today? And I apologize again for the technical difficulties we experienced um, when you're doing one of these things and trying to run lots of different uh, types of technology at the same time. You're bound to get a little, a few hiccups. But I appreciate you sticking with us. And um, if there aren't any questions, uh, I, I hope you join us again next week when we look at a new app. And if you ever have any suggestions for apps that you'd like to see, Feel free to email them to Jenny. She's the one that emails you, uh, that uh, reminds you about these, uh, these, these resources every week. So um, if there are no questions, I will wrap it up for today. And, and we'll see you folks next week. Although before we do that, I'll also give you a reminder that Monday, uh, at what time, Jenny? Monday at, I think it's 11. Monday at 11, and an email will go out. There is an hour-long webinar on assistive technology consideration in the IEP. So if you're interested in that, you can catch it Monday at 11, or we'll archi archive it on our website after that. All right, do we have anything, Jenny, or are we all good? Good to go? All right, well, thanks, folks. Uh, we'll see you next week.